Hello everyone, back tuning into today's video. Going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days. In today's video, this will take us into the second week of April. Uh, we'll also have a look at CFSB2 and see what's that, what that's showing for pretty much all of April now. So, a um, bit of an April look ahead, uh, really. And there is a little bit of uncertainty about this month. The short range models, and particularly the GFS, which I'm going to show you in a moment, increasingly wants to move us towards spring, I think, through the course of April. But the longer range CFS really isn't seeing that, uh, to be honest. And uh, it's going to be... I think we will get some... More spring like weather, particularly by the second week of uh, April. But when we sustain it, how quickly we get to it, I think there's a lot of uncertainty about it. And we, whether the atmosphere is trying to pull itself out of this uh, cold weather that we've had, really since we have the sudden stratospheric warming back in uh, February. The, the climate, the, um, uh, the weather system is trying to revert itself to a, a more general setup. Uh, but uh, it's a slow old process to recover from this stratospheric warming. Whether we really manage to um, to pull it off and get back into a more typical spring-like pattern uh, for April, I think there is uncertainty about it, but I think we will have some um, spring-like conditions through the second week of the month anyway. But I'll show you what's happening uh, in a moment. It isn't definitive uh, at the moment that we're moving into spring in April. Hopefully we will, but uh, I'll show you what's going on in a second. Do you want to start off with uh, news from the YouTube channel? So I'm on the Gazo Vids YouTube channel right now. We launched this channel in uh, March 2014. So we've had this channel for four years. Of course, we started off with uh, the Gavin Partridge personal uh, YouTube channel. Um We've just gone over 3,000 subscribers for uh, our Gazovich YouTube channel, and we are rapidly closing in on uh, 2 million video views uh, in four years. So, uh, big numbers uh, now for the Gazovich uh, YouTube channel. It really has uh, taken off, particularly over the last uh, year or two. Uh, the growth of the uh, Gav Service YouTube channel has been ph phenomenal. So a big thank you to everybody for subscribing and tuning in uh, on YouTube. Of course, it all ties back to the Gav's WeatherVids website. And this is the Gav's uh, website where we have our competition. So we've teamed up with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation uh, to give away this uh, lovely prize. It's the combined weather dial and it's a thermometer, it's a hydrometer, a hydrometer and a barometer all in one uh, lovely looking compact uh, unit. It goes outside so it's a perfect sort of feature for any uh, garden and it can be yours for uh, 30, uh, for free. It's worth 39 95 but this uh, can be yours for free if you uh, uh, enter our competition so all you have to do surprise yourself you don't have to answer any uh, difficult questions all you have to do is email your name and address to gavsovis at gmail.com or you can fill out the contact form which is just here again put your name and address in the your message box just there uh, and uh, that will uh, inevitably get you into the uh, prize draw we're heading up to 150 entrants for our prize draw we've only had this going on for a couple of days so a bit a huge huge response um, this year and uh, you still got plenty of time to enter because we won't be doing the prize draw until Sunday, uh, 1st of April, Easter Sunday. Of course, you've got plenty of time to get uh, your entries uh, in to us and we'll place you into the prize draw when you do that. And a big thank you to uh, metcheck.co.uk for uh, supplying this lovely prize to us. And if you don't win, actually, there is something for all of the runners-up this year because um, you're going to get a 15% exclusive discount code, which I will be revealing uh, when I do the winner's video and uh, the uh, written post for the uh, announcing the winner on Sunday. 
All runners-up uh, for this competition will get an exclusive 15% off discount code, which lasts for two weeks from uh, Sunday, East Sunday, through to 15th of April. Uh, so if you want to buy any product with mechcheck.co.uk, it doesn't have to be that weather diet. It could be any product you will want to buy. You can go to MechCheck's uh, website. The link is here on the competition page. We'll also link to it on the links page uh, to Gazza Vids. So uh, you can just go and uh, buy whatever item you want you can use your 15% off discount code that you will get exclusive for entering this competition and a big thank you to everybody for entering still plenty of time to get your entries in so um, get emailing Right, we're going to start off having a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're looking at Hemel Hempstead uh, today. So it's going to be a bit cold really through to the start of April. That's the 1st of April east today uh, just there. We're starting off relatively mild at the moment, but it does feel a bit cooler even now compared to uh, the past couple of days. And through to the beginning of April, it looks like it's going to be a bit colder than average. Uh, really. Now, you've probably heard in the, or read in the papers something about the beast from the east uh, part three coming back over Easter. Uh, it is going to be a rather chilly Easter, but it's not going to be that cold. There was a suggestion about a week, ten days ago, that Easter might be very cold. It isn't going to be that cold for Easter, but it will be a chilly Easter uh, this year. Certainly the first half of it, anyway, will be quite chilly. It may warm up, particularly myself, by Easter Monday. And just rather a damp, uh, cool, uh, at times quite cold Easter coming up. There is a bit of wintry potential, and that's more particularly for the north, a little bit less so down in the south. Actually, we're going to have the uh, next Easter update, uh, which I think will be the fifth Easter update, coming up for you this evening around 7 o'clock. So I'll have a detailed look at the Easter period um, for uh, tonight's uh, Easter update. But it's not going to be a uh, very, very cold uh, snowy, uh, severely sort of wintry Easter, but it will, the temperatures will remain subdued, it's going to be damp, it's going to be cool, and there'll be rain, and possibly even a little bit of snow around at times. So that takes us through the Easter period, beyond that, through the first week and into the second week of April, you can see what's happening then, we've got a very distinct warming trend taking place here, with the GFS ensembles for Hemel Hempstead, signs that the temperatures are starting to lift up there, through the first week and into the second week of April. This is something I talked about in yesterday's video, spring arriving in the second week of April. It looks like the GFS and the GFS ensembles definitely want to train in that direction, but I have got a few doubts about it, and I'll explain those doubts later in the video. In terms of precipitation, just lots of rainfall spikes coming up. It is going to be a very unsettled period through to the start of April. We're going to have, particularly for the south, quite a bit of wet weather coming and going over the next few days. There will be rain in the south tomorrow, which may in fact be a little bit wintry over higher ground of, uh, say, Wales and the Midlands through the course of tomorrow morning. So that could be something to be uh, aware of. Again, we're not talking about um, depths of snow, we're not talking about inches, but uh, there may be an accumulations of snow over high ground through parts of Wales and the Midlands tomorrow morning. Just generally quite a cold, wet day for most parts of the South tomorrow. And that's the kind of thing we've got going into Easter. Uh, unfortunately. Um, this is how the surface temperatures are looking for Hemel Hempstead. So we've got 10 degrees Celsius just there. We've got freezing there. We've got plus 20 up here. We've got minus 10 uh, down there. We're starting off today a little bit above 10 degrees, so relatively mild. But over the uh, next few days, we're going under 10 degrees. So, I mean, under 10 degrees at the end of March into the start of April, that is clearly colder than average. You would expect across southeastern England to be getting about 10 degrees Celsius now. So, very disappointing temperatures really in the coming days. Through to next week, let's continue this on. So, through to next week, again, temperatures stay a little bit subdued, but slowly but surely as we're going into the second week of the April, they are at least trying to pick up a little bit. There is a bit of a warming trend taking place. And you'll notice 
there are a few ensemble, mem ensemble members but are actually at this extended range which is into the second week of April going quite warm so we have got a few ensemble members they're outliers at the moment but just a few of these ensemble members are lifting up to 20 degrees around 20 degrees um, by the second week of April that's getting close to 70 Fahrenheit um, so clearly that is proper spring like weather if not early summer type dishes now bear in mind those are outliers they're not well supported chances are we won't get it as warm as that through the second week of april but i think we do see evidence through the gfs ensembles that there's a warming trend taking place although even then we have got a few cold outliers still continuing uh, with temperatures down there uh, still really quite subdued and suppressed so it's uncertain but the gfs is shifting more towards spring by uh, the second week of April. Now, this is how the uh, temperature anomaly is looking for the next week. It's taking us from the 27th of March through to the 4th of April, and it's coming out colder than average. It's covering the Easter period, of course, which you know is going to be chilly. We're not talking about beach from East Part 2, but it is going to be quite a cool to cold Easter with below average temperatures. And so we see the evidence of that. And most parts of Europe are coming out with below average temperatures as well in the weekend. And precipitation anomalies are coming out above average from the 27th of March through the 4th of April. So it's a pretty dismal week coming up. And unfortunately, this is covering the Easter period. We've got below average temperatures, we've got above average precipitation. Some of it could be a little bit wintry, particularly for the north as well. So it's not a very inspiring uh, outlook for the week ahead, um, to say the least. This is how the uh, midnight run of the GFS was looking for Saturday with low pressure just to the south of the country bringing in this, these easterly winds. I mean, if we was further back into the winter, these would be very cold easterly winds and we would be seeing the risk of quite widespread snow. The only reason we're not getting very widespread snow with this is because we're now going into April and it's always much harder to uh, get snow in April. It can snow in April. We have had occasionally some uh, real blizzards even at the end of April, would you believe? That happened uh, in the final week of April 1908 and also in the final week of April 1981. So even right at the end of April, it's not too late occasionally to get very snowy weather, but it is much harder uh, as you get into April to get snow. And so we're mainly looking at rain for southern parts of the country, I think, for the uh, Easter weekend. But further north, don't rule out the risk of snow, especially through northern England and into Scotland as well. That's how Easter Sunday is looking. Not a too bad because we are um, building down this ridge. So, I mean, it's quite cold. It's a pretty cool Easter Sunday, but it's drier uh, with this ridge extending down from the north. Go through to Easter Monday and low pressure starting to push back up from the southwest. So, that's likely going to bring many of us a very wet day on Easter Monday, I'm afraid. We will cover this in depth in the Easter update, I have to say that again, but uh, likely to be quite a wet day on Easter Monday. As that rain moves north, hits the cold air, it might turn to snow across northern England, probably more likely across Scotland. We'll have all the detail on that uh, in tonight's Easter update. Following along behind is a much uh, milder push of air from the southwest. So as we go deeper into next week, it stays very unsettled. Low pressure is uh, close to the country through next week. But we are bringing up initially less cold and then eventually milder or warmer air from the southwest. And that's how we go into uh, just beyond day 10. So this takes us to Saturday the 7th of April. It's a little bit beyond day 10. But by then, high pressure is beginning to develop over to the east of the country, starting to drag up much warmer air from the south. And so that is true spring getting going. That would be lifting temperatures at least to the mid-teens Celsius, probably not quite to 20 degrees like we saw with one or two of those uh, outlier ensemble members. But nevertheless, that is true spring there as we're going to the end of the first week and then into the second week of April. The air is coming up from the south. We're close to a ridge of high pressure. That will finally 
push us into genuine spring-like conditions. That for midnight run. What about the six o'clock run? Very similar for Saturday. The low pressure just of a south and southeast. It's actually bringing in those uh, cool to cold easterly winds. going to be dank and uh, dismal as we go through into uh, the Easter weekend. Easter Monday starts to push this low pressure up from the southwest. That could bring a lot of rain, I would have thought, by the time we go through into uh, Easter Monday. Not very good conditions at all. It is trying to introduce warmer air from the southwest, but on this run, the cold air from the north is uh, sort of fighting. So uh, eventually, as that low pressure moves through by the middle of next week, we actually turn winds back into the north again and get a shot of really quite cold air coming back from the Arctic, just struggling, just telling us that we're struggling to uh, truly move into a definitive spring-like weather pattern. We're heading up towards day 10 now, and we're starting to generate a bit of a ridge from the Azores high, so starting to try and get a bit milder into the uh, second week of April, most definitely. The winds is, again, starting to shift round to the south. So, as I say, trying to move in towards spring by the second week of April. But initially, actually, we get another shot of northerly winds next week on that six o'clock run of the uh, GFS. This is how the ECMWF is looking with low pressure to the south uh, on uh, Saturday and bringing in most chilly uh, to cold easterly winds. Stays pretty cold through to Easter Sunday. Then Easter Monday, we're trying to move this low pressure up from the southwest. Not moving up as quickly as uh, the GFS is doing. So even by Tuesday, Scotland is still in cold air with easterly winds. Further south, we are trying to introduce that milder air from the southwest. Um, we go through the course of next week. It looks unsettled and it never really warms up across Scotland. The wind remains in from the north across uh, Scotland throughout next week. In the south, probably does get a little bit milder, but it's unsettled with rain. And that's how we look by day 10. If I show you the upper air temperatures, still generally quite cold across most parts of the country. So really struggling with the ECMWF to uh, introduce anything uh, particularly spring-like. And the CFS is not really seeing uh, a change towards spring either. So um, these are the 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods with the CFS V2. Uh, first week period takes us from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April with below average heights close to the UK and still this sort of blocky type signal to the north, to the west as well, which is placing us on the cold side of projection. So cool to cold and unsettled in the week ahead with CFS V2. That's how things are looking uh, in week two, which is preferred to the 9th of April. Uh, it's unsettled, but at least when he's beginning to try and revert more towards a westerly type uh, situation. So maybe a little bit less cold, but still very unsettled there through week two. Uh, week three does look better. This is the 10th to the 16th of April, building the ridge to the east and to the southeast of the country with the below average heights being pushed back into the Atlantic. That would be spring-like, I would have thought. We would start to pull up the air from the south or the southwest. So a burst of spring there through the second week of April. Um, but look what it does as we go through to week four, which is the 17th to the 23rd of April. Again, it starts to move us back into that sort of uh, block type pattern with high pressure appearing again close to Greenland, which with this low pressure down here would send the jet stream off into a southerly track and will start to pull colder air back in from the north and the east again. So after uh, perhaps a little bit of a burst of spring, uh, through the second week of April, by the third week of April, we're going back into a uh, pretty cool blocked, I mean cold, blocked type conditions again. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead are coming out colder than average. Week two temperature anomalies are also coming out colder than average, although less so than week one. Uh, week three temperature anomalies did look like we should be starting to generate a bit of spring then, but it's only going back sort of to average, really, with those week free temperature anomalies, though most of Europe is going above average. So I think that's a little bit um, pessimistic, actually. I would have thought that is likely to be a warmer than average week. But by week four, we're actually going back to colder than average temperature anomalies 
again. So overall, this is shaping up to be quite a cold April, uh, or certainly a cool April, if CFS is right. And this is how the overall 700 millibar height anomaly is looking for April 2018 with the CFS V2. And overall, it wants to have an area of blocking close to Iceland with below average heights underneath it, which would send the jet stream off or continue, um, not send it off, but will continue to have the jet stream on a Surrey track as it has been pretty much since we had that sudden stratospheric warming at uh, the early part of February, in the early part of February. So an unsettled but block type pattern is what the model overall is seeing for April. And so the consequences of that is to uh, give us a uh, cold of an average month. This is the temperature forecast from the CFS for April 2018. And most of Northern Europe, the UK and Ireland included, is coming out colder than average. So the CFS is not, to be honest, it's not seeing this change to spring. Uh, certainly not a definitive one. Anyway, it does suggest it might get a little bit more spring-like sometime through the second week of April. But by the third week, we're going back into those um, pretty cool uh, block-type conditions again. Uh, and the overall CFS model, the long-range model, that still wants to keep things pretty chilly and blocked uh, through April as well. We have got the GFS and its ensembles to cling to, which increasingly are painting the picture that for the second week of April, we might go towards a more spring-like type pattern. But uh, it's not definitive. So I think we're just going to have to wait and see how this is going to play out. The atmosphere wants to get itself into a more uh, typical setup, I think, now. It wants to leave behind the effects of that sun stratospheric warming but sometimes when you have these big ones, the same was true to um, actually a much more extreme um, uh, type pattern. The same was true in 2013 when it took, we had the sun stratospheric warming up the start of January 2013. And we actually came away, the coldest part of that was through March into early April uh, when we went into a very extreme cold blocked uh, setup and had our coldest March since uh, either 1962 or 1883. That year also took a very, very long time to get itself out of that uh, block setup that occurred after the stratospheric warming. We're seeing the same kind of thing now, but it's not as extreme. The cold is an extreme. And the blocking isn't as extreme. But nevertheless, uh, I think through April, whilst we will try and revert to more spring-like pattern, it may not be all that straightforward. Right, we've got the next Easter update coming up for you uh, this evening. That'll be around 7 o'clock. So come back to that for your full detailed rundown on uh, the weather we're expecting this Easter. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.